Well, the next thing we're going to do is put in the sink, or the lavatory as they call it. Now, we want to start by doing the cutout for the sink based on the template that comes in the box with the sink. Now, first I want to get this board on, though, so that uh, we don't have to worry about the, the cutout dropping or binding once we finish the cut. Now the faucet and drain assembly comes in about, oh, ten different little packages, which is fairly typical. Now that includes the spout, the valves, the supply tube between the valves and the spout, as well as a drain assembly. Now the particular faucet we're working with is a wide set faucet. The other type is a center set. Now this is, the center set is one where everything's in one piece and requires a sink with three different holes and the holes have to be spaced four inches apart. With a, a wide spread like this, the holes many times are 8 inches apart, or in the case of this faucet, it can be adjustable. None of this is connected here, so these holes really could be anywhere on the sink. So obviously you have to coordinate what's going on with the faucet, your sink, and your countertop. Well, for instance, on this particular sink, this comes in three different configurations. One where the holes are 8 inches apart, another one where they're 4 inches apart, and then another one where it's a single hole, because many times a faucet only requires a single hole. What I've done so far is to put the spout and valves into their respective holes. And just what this involves really differs from one brand to the next, so you really need to read the instructions that come with it. So you'll know how to keep the washers and nuts and gaskets all straight and where they, where they should be going. Now I want to connect the tube from our valves over to our, our spout. Now the way, well first what I want to do is get some pipe dope on here to, to lubricate everything up just a little bit. Once I get that on, then this uh, tube just kind of screws into our valve and then we'll go from there over to the threaded posts on our T. Now the water of the house is shut off and I cut the caps off the ends of these copper pipes coming out of the okay, wall. Okay, here you go. Great, thanks. Now the first thing I want to do is install the shutoff valve and then I can turn the water back on. The valve is a compression fitting. The uh, collar goes on first, and then this little brass ring, and then the valve. And then everything gets tightened down. Now the pipe coming out of the wall has got an inside diameter of a half inch. So you want to make sure to get the right size valve. Now usually, the pipe going to the sink is a 3 8 inch diameter on the outside. And with the compression fitting, the ring gets tightened down into the copper pipe, which creates a watertight seal. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. Oh, okay, there you go. Well, we moved on to the drain assembly. Now this is the flange. A little bit of plumber's putty around the outside. Now this fits into the, the drain hole in the sink. I take my drain tail piece and I screw that into the bottom of the flange. I want to get that as, as tight as possible. Okay, there we go. Now once that is fairly tight, then I want to really secure everything, and I do that by spinning this lock nut. And I keep on doing that till it's really secure. set here. I'll put this adhesive down up here. Just about finished. Okay, just about set. Now the last thing on our drain assembly is the stopper. Now, we want to take this uh, collar and screw this into the hole on the side of our drain tail piece. Now it's kind of tricky in uh, connecting the handle, which I'm sliding through the top of the spout, and our lever. Now what we want to accomplish here is we want this handle to move freely. We want the stopper to move all the way up and all the way down. So we'll start with it in the fourth hole and see how that how that works. Let's see. Uh, not uh, exactly perfect. Let's move it up the third hole, see how that works. This thing attached. Okay, we're in a complete down position, right about there. It down. Okay, yeah, that seems to be working pretty good. All right, now the last thing I want to do is hook up these supply tubes to our valves 
get a little pipe uh, dope on here. It's a lot easier doing it now than once the sink is in place. Well, we're just about ready to set the sink into the countertop. I put a couple of small beads of silicone adhesive around the edge of the opening. And the rim of the sink will sit right on top of that and glue it into place. Okay, all set? Yep. There we go. There you go. Okay, well, we didn't cut the hole too big. That's good. That's good. Hooking up these flexible supply tubes is fairly straightforward. You just want to tighten them just a little bit past hand tighten. There we go. For the drain connections, you need to have a trap. That's what this is. One end of it slides onto the drain tailpiece coming down from the sink. See that? Yeah. For the tailpiece, you can shorten it by cutting it, or you can lengthen it by replacing it or adding an extension to it. The layout for our sink and pipes meant that we had to lengthen the tailpiece and shorten the trap. There we go. Okay. I'll take the trap and slide it up the tailpiece get it at approximately the right height. Take the other part of the trap and slide that into the pipe that we originally roughed in to the uh, wall here. Now this had a, a threaded trap adapter that we glued onto it. And this is how we'll make the connection of the trap to the wall. We'll leave that a little loose and we'll swivel our pivoting joint on the trap over. Get those on top of each other where they should go. This gives us, the swivel here gives us a little bit of flexibility on lining everything up. Now the trap and the tailpiece and even the trap adapter can all be white PVC like we've got here or black ABS, plastic or chrome. This PVC is probably going to be the easiest to work with and also your least expensive alternative. Okay, let's give that a try. When you turn on a new faucet for the first time, take the screen off the end of the spout and let the water run for a couple of minutes. This is to flush out any debris in the lines. Okay, the water's on. Okay. There you go. How's it going? Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't see anything leaking. So far, so good. Yeah. A laminate countertop with a self-rimming sink is just one of several options you have for a bathroom sink. A very common choice is to go with a cultured marble countertop with an integral bowl. When you install one of these, you attach the faucet and the drain assembly first. Usually it just takes a couple of dabs of silicone adhesive to hold these in place to the top of the vanity cabinet. Cultured marble tops come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors. They're molded from a plaster type material and finished with a hard glaze, although this one has a nice matte finish. The cost for this size and style is about $300, but other styles in this size start at about $150. Another option for the sink in the bathroom is to install a pedestal sink. A pedestal sink is partially supported by a pedestal that sits on the floor but it's also partially supported with a bracket or double-sided bolts on the wall. So it's helpful to install wooden blocking in the wall behind the sink early in the construction. This way, there will be something solid to secure the bracket or the bolts into. Since the plumbing connections for a pedestal sink are visible, we try to use attractive fittings, brass or chrome plated shutoff valves, supply lines, and trap. A metal trap assembly will usually include an escutcheon to cover where the drain pipe comes out of the wall. 